From San Diego, California, this is a One Extraordinary Marriage Show. We're being busy is overdone, romancing is fun, and scheduling sex has taken the guesswork out of wondering when you're going to get some. I'm Tony DeLorenzo, your co-host, along with my beautiful wife, Elisa. From coast to coast and around the world, thank you for joining us. It's time to talk sex, love, and commitment. Give us a call on the Hug Hotline at 858-876-5663. That's 858-876-5663. In today's show, we talk about breaking free of those negative parenting behaviors. You know, the ones that have held you back from having the extraordinary marriage you desire. And think about this quote that actually came from a Chinese proverb. It said, each generation will reap what the former generation has sown. And we're going to be talking about that a lot in today's show about what we saw from our parents um, and how that impacts our marriages. But before we do that, We start each and every One Extraordinary Marriage show with a hug. And the hug is an opportunity for you to hear from somebody else in the one family, to hear how they've been impacted, to hear how they've changed their marriage. And this week's hug is sponsored by Casper. And we're so excited to talk to you guys about Casper because they are an obsessively engineered mattress at a shockingly fair price. They combine supportive memory foams to create an award-winning sleep surface with just the right sink and just the right bounce. Mm-hmm. Now, you always all know we love talking about what happens in the bedroom. So you got to think if you've got a mattress with just the right sink and just the right bounce, it's going to be a good thing, right? With over 20,000 reviews on Casper, Amazon, and Google, and an average of 4.8 stars, it's quickly becoming the internet's favorite mattress. And here's the here's one of the parts that I love. Not only do they have free shipping and returns to the US and Canada, but you can try Casper for 100 nights risk-free in your own home. And if you don't love it, they're going to pick it up and refund you everything. They're designed, developed, and assembled right here in the United States. And they gave a special offer to listeners in the one family. You can get $50 towards any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash one and using promo code one. Terms and conditions apply. You guys are going to know when you get to the right page because it's going to say welcome one extraordinary marriage at the top. But here's the thing, guys, what you sleep on matters, right? What you have sex on matters. Mm -hmm. So make sure that what that is, is something that you both feel good about and you love it and you're going to check it out this week at casper.com slash one. So this week's hug comes from a Facebook message that we received and it says, thank you so much for your podcast. My wife and I both listen regularly. We have done your seven day sex challenge. What a great idea. Great. We now schedule our sex. I initiate two times from Sunday to Tuesday. She initiates two times from Thursday to Saturday. Wednesday is our grace day. We have been exceeding our required minimum and have lots of fun doing so. Our intimacy, communication, and overall general happiness is better than we can remember. Keep up your wonderful work and keep saving marriages because it saves so much more. We love you. I love that. I love that they did the seven days of challenge, seven days of sex challenge. That's an awesome. We did it. We're counting it and that they implemented the uh, intimacy lifestyle and and, and they implemented it in the way that works for them, which is what we share with you guys each and every week. We talk about certain topics, certain discussions, certain areas, and and this one in particular, which we're going to get into, take the nuggets and, and tweak it to work your marriage. Absolutely. All different. You know, their intimacy lifestyle looks a lot different than ours. And did you hear what he said, though? He said, we our intimacy, communication and overall general happiness is better than we can remember. Yeah. Right. This is a, this is a transformed couple. And that's what we desire for each and every single one of you. And and that's why we're talking about this topic today. Right. We're talking about, you know, those negative parenting behaviors that you and I all saw growing up. And the truth is, is that what we see, what we saw as children has such an impact on how we show up in our married lives, right? We've watched as children, you watch your parents and you watch the other marriages around you and you start to internalize how you will and won't do marriage, Mm -hmm. right? Sometimes some of you have made those vows that say, I'll never be like my mother or my father, right? I'm never going to do that in my marriage, Mm -hmm. right? You make those vows as a child with what you were seeing. Maybe it was your parents fighting, or maybe it was just them being distant or not really like touching each other or anything like that. And and you're just like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that until the day that it happens in your own marriage until the day that you get into an argument and you walk away, maybe just like mom did, 
or until the day that you start having financial problems and you don't talk about it. It's those times when all of a sudden in your own marriage and in your own life, a light bulb goes off Mm -hmm. because you're sitting there and maybe you don't remember that vow that you said to yourself many, many, many years ago. And it's now at that point in time where you say it and it's like, oh my gosh, it just hit me. Like I said, I was never going to be that way. And now I am. Right. And so often we think about this in terms of our parenting, right? Like how we're going to parent our own children. What we don't realize is that those vows and all of those behaviors that we saw growing up about how to do marriage, we've got all of those running around in our head, right? And and all of a sudden, because that was your model on either how to do or not do marriage. And and let me just say something here. Um, Everybody has dysfunctional parents. Can, Can I just, even the best parents have a level of dysfunction right? Nobody's perfect. We've, uh, we've established that many, many times in the 370 plus episodes that we've done on one extraordinary marriage, but dysfunctional, not dysfunctional, whatever your perception of your parents, there were some things that you looked at your parents and you're like, you know what, that I want to keep doing. Like Mm -hmm. I want to take that into my marriage. And then there were those other behaviors that you're like, I will never, ever, ever do that. And, you know, Tony and I are in a very unique situation. Our parents got married within two months of each other in 1972, which means where we are right now recording this show, one has already celebrated their 45th wedding anniversary and one's getting ready to celebrate their 45th wedding anniversary. So we came, you know, one, one of the, one of the gifts that our parents gave us is this idea of longevity. Like you stick it out. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you something, what it looks like when parents are sticking things out sometimes can have a whole lot of yuck associated with it, right? And a whole lot of good things too. And and we've got to, as adults, folks, you and I have to be able to sift through the behaviors that aren't working in our marriages and the ones that are. Just because you've always done it one way doesn't mean it's the right way and it doesn't mean it's effective, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, and you guys know, I mean, we share this often on, on the show that a lot of times these topics come out of a trend that we've seen happening over the last, you know, week, two weeks, three weeks where emails start coming up or coaching calls start happening where it's like, wow, that just keeps happening. I keep having the same conversation. And this is a conversation that was happening. I think I had three or four coaching clients last week where we were talking about the impact of what they saw or didn't see growing up in their parents' marriages, coming out over and over again in their own. And and now it's coming up in a place of pain. Right. Right. You know, I was talking to a guy last week who, you know, dad was a great provider, but he never saw his dad be affectionate with his mom. And so that plays out in a way. And it's interesting you bring that up because as we are going through this and and I was thinking about my childhood and what I saw growing up, I I was thinking that myself. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, when it came to my folks, affection really wasn't something I saw much of. Maybe holding hands every so often, but I just, I don't ever remember like my folks being that way. You know, even communication, Mm -hmm. even talking to each other about bigger topics, I just don't ever remember that. And, and I'm, and I was just thinking of that through that because I think of in our marriage and in our lives, we are affectionate to the point where our kids are like, Oh my gosh, can do you guys stop have it? To, do you guys have to do that out in public? And I'm thinking, yeah, I do because I, I cherish Elisa and I want others to know that I want others to know that she is my one and only. And yet that's not something that I saw mm-hmm. in my childhood. And it's something that I will say early on in our marriage wasn't something we did. Because I saw, again, I saw that growing up. And so I just brought that into our marriage early on. Can that change? Sure thing. Now I'm much more affectionate and loving towards Elisa inside and outside our home. Absolutely. And, you know, in that example that Tony gave, you know, it was one of the things where that was his model. You know, mom and dad have a good marriage. Mom and dad are still married. Mom and dad aren't necessarily affectionate. It -hmm. it works, right? Except that I actually enjoy affection. Right. And so it's one of those depends on what time of the month it is. Okay. Well, 
<laughs> truth. <laughs> yes, truth. But it's one of those things where, you know, you have these gaps, right? You have, you have these challenges of maybe you never saw your parents like Tony have deep conversations, right? So you don't necessarily know that married couples actually discuss big things. Finances. Here, here, here's a big one. I never even realized that. Again, that's another big topic that I never saw my parents talk about ever anything about money. I, I really just never saw it. So again, coming into the marriage, I felt like it was all my responsibility. I needed to take care of it. I'm the, I'm the man of the household now. And guess what, mm -hmm. man, that, that shifted too. that had to shift. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when we were 50,000 in debt, it, it wasn't only me who was in that debt. Elisa brought some of her own. We, we had a lot of it together and we had to come up with a plan together and a goal together to attack it. Mm -hmm. But again, in my family wasn't talked about. Right. You know, you also bring in, how did you see anger dealt with? Mm -hmm. Right. That's because big one. some of you saw a parent and I'm not saying, a, you know, a father or mother, but some of you saw a parent who would erupt in anger. Right. And it was a very, you know, potentially very scary, very hostile environment. Some of you saw other parents withdraw in anger, mm -hmm. right? Avoiding that confrontation, withdrawing, you know, closing themselves off, things like that. And so you now bring one of those two behaviors to your marriage. Those of you that have been around for a little while, you know, we either refer to it as the volcano, the eruptor, or the iceberg, the one who has a lot going on beneath the surface, but you can't tell. And it's still dangerous. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you bring these behaviors in and and you know, you, we, we all get angry. Like, let me burst that bubble. If you're like, Oh, I never get angry. You probably do. You're just not dealing with it. Right. We all get, but how do we deal with it and, and how we deal with it often comes because of what we, what we saw our parents do, or maybe in your marriage, you heard, you know, in your family growing up, you heard things like, well, you know, your father's not getting any tonight, right? Because I'm mad at him. Or you heard, maybe you overheard mom talking about it and sex became a weapon. Mm-hmm. Right. Or, you know, as you got older, you know, it wasn't something you heard as a child, but as you got older, you realized that sex was a weapon. And so now it's become a weapon in your own marriage. Right. Of right. Well, I'm not going to I'm not going to be sexual with my husband or I'm not going to be sexual with my wife because, you know what, I'm mad. And so we're not going there. You know, so you have that happen. It, it's being that provider. Right. Like uh, this guy I was talking to last week, he's like, my dad provided for all of our needs. Right. But didn't have that affection. Right. So, you know, he's in this place, like we were talking about earlier, where he's in this place where his wife's like, I, I need, like, thank you for meeting all of our, you know, financial needs and providing for us. But, but I need you. Right. I need that affection. I, I need that touch and that engagement um, for us to, to feel connected. Right. <laughs> right. Like, I want to I mean, touch you. You know, anybody can meet my material needs, but I need the emotional needs met. Right. Right. It's having that modeled. It's, you know, I've got, I've dealt with coaching clients in the past who, because they saw name calling happen with their parents. Right. And, and again, it goes back to that anger point, but I'm, I'm going to take the anger just one step further and say, you know, for some of you, you saw your parents scream all kinds of things at each other. Back and forth obscenities, you know, loud, quiet sneers, whatever it may be. That's now, you know, become part of your repertoire. It's because that's the way you saw it. Again, not good or it, when we were talking about these parenting behaviors, there are also good ones that you've seen. Mm -hmm. we're, we're sharing some of those tougher ones or the rougher ones because those are the ones that typically cause havoc in your own marriage. And you may be sitting there going, well, this and this and this, and, and, and you're putting the blame on your spouse maybe. Maybe you're pointing the finger at your spouse, and right now you may need to be pointing the finger at yourself and going, wow, what did I see growing up? What have I internalized growing up that I'm now taking into my marriage, and it's affecting my my marriage? And, and if you already have kids, their legacy, right? Because let me tell you, when Elisa and I began to have kids and they began to grow up, it really started to impact me because I started to realize like the way we were treating each other, the way we, the way we showed love to each other or didn't show love to each other, the way we spoke to each other with, with words or not with words, our kids were, were there mm -hmm. and they're perceptive little ones. <laughs> and even to this day, they're perceptive and they can, they can gain that and they gather that information. 
And so for us, it was really a, an eye-opening experience because it wasn't just about us anymore. You know, we, we were we were impacting the next generation who would then impact our grandkids. Mm-hmm. And so think about that when you start pointing the finger at your, your spouse. It may be, man, I saw my mom do this or I saw my dad do this. And that is not the way I want to be living in my marriage. Absolutely. Because, you know, here's the thing, guys. Just, like, And we're not blaming your parents for anything. Can I, can I just no be way. really clear here? Not blaming you either. We're, we're not blaming anyone. What we're trying to do to this topic today is to bring light to the fact that, that we all come into marriage with a suitcase. And the suitcase is called our past, right? And our models for marriage are the people that we lived with and the people that we saw on a day-to-day basis doing this thing called wedded bliss. And sometimes it wasn't so blissful. And, and so we've got to be able to objectively look at those behaviors. And, and the reason we're not talking about the positive ones is because you know what those are. And it's very easy to continue the positive behaviors. We've got to be couples that shed light on the dark behaviors, on the negative behaviors and say, you know what, this isn't effective anymore. These, mm-hmm. these ways that we're treating one another aren't working. And it's not enough, like Tony said, to just blame your spouse and be like, well, if you would just change, I wouldn't be like this. We have to be mature enough in our marriages to say, wait a minute, if I'm reacting like this every single time, where is that coming from? And, and here's another thing too, as we we're discussing this, maybe Maybe the person who you looked up to growing up may not have been your parent. May have been, may have been somebody else. You know, you, you, your grandparents may have taken care of you. You know, your, your mom may have stepped out away or your dad, you know, um, stepped away or whatever may be the cause. Who is that mentor? Who is that person when you were growing up that you looked up to? Mm-hmm. See, because there was a point in my life when my dad worked so much, I didn't see him. I didn't see him for years. I mean, I would see him on the weekend, maybe, when he was back home, but he wasn't around. And so fortunately for myself, I was blessed to have met a a guy who I began to start road cycling with. And Joe, I mean, 20 years older than me, I guess. More than that. I think he's 30 years older than me. Um... But Joe was that man that began to become my model. Mm -hmm. And I saw the way he treated his wife and the way he treated his daughters. And so even though it wasn't my dad, he was a mentor to me. And I learned a lot from him as well. The good things and some of the bad things as well. Mm -hmm. Because he became my mentor for many years. And it's, it's being able to look at those mentors right? And, and mentors can have a positive or a negative impact, mm-hmm. right? Like it's not, you know, sometimes we hear the word mentor and we only think good. Th- they do both, right? Anybody that impacts your life can have a positive or a negative impact. And so it's looking at those folks and saying, okay, wait a minute, you know, just because this was the seed that was planted in me, right? Maybe it's the seed of anger. Maybe it's a seed of name calling. Maybe it's a seed of rejection or, or the, the seed of, you know, non-confrontation, whatever it is. Just because that seed got planted in you as a child doesn't mean that you as an adult have to continue to let it grow. Exactly. Right? So you true. you are gifted the ability as an adult to make decisions on the behaviors that you're going to engage in. Nobody is telling you, oh my gosh, well, because you've been like this for 30 years, you must be like this for the next 30 years. Nope. Do Sorry. you not have to? N- not allowing you to live in that place. Right? My coaching clients know I ask the question often. Well, you know, I asked two questions. One, how's that working out for you? And two, what are we going to do to change that? Mm-hmm. Right? Because I, and this, this is the same thing for each and every one of you in the one family. I don't care where your past behavior has been if it hasn't been effective for the two of you. What I care about and what Tony and I care about as we get behind these mics each and every week is where are you going to make the changes to make your behavior more effective to have that extraordinary marriage that you desire? And I'm going to say this, when you do begin to make change and you see that, please don't expect it to happen overnight. But we were talking last week about the transitions that are going through my life right now and our family right now. And it would be wonderful to stand behind these microphones and say, oh my gosh, we are doing fantastic, you know, from where we dropped off a week ago to right now. But guess what? Today, this morning, honestly, I heard a word and it was like six months, six months. And I was like, okay. And Believe me, that that 
at the same time that that's great, like I heard that, it's also a little frightening because it means that there's going to be a test and there's going to be trials over these next six months as I grow in, 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 a, in a different way. And so please realize that through the change, it doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you're trying to make those changes in your own life and it just doesn't happen in a week, know that you're not alone. Right. Know that, you know what, there are others of us right here, you know, behind these microphones that also struggle with trying to get things done quicker, sooner, faster. And yet it takes sometimes going through the valley and walking through that valley and knowing what's going on to begin climbing up the other side of the mountain. Absolutely. You know, cause the fact of matters is that, you know, as you're walking through the valley, you're choosing to do marriage differently, right? You're, you're going differently than the model that you received, the model that you grew up with. But the fact of matter is, is that it takes action on your part. And we want to tackle what those actions are. But before we do that, don't forget to check out Casper mattresses and the special offer that they have for all of you in the one family. You get $50 towards any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash one and using promo code one. So I, I just want to ask you, you know, what do you do when you find history repeating itself, especially the versions of history that you would rather leave in the past. And we all have it. Mm -hmm. We all have those, those versions, those behaviors that we'd rather leave in, leave in the past. And you know, the first thing that you need to do is you need to evaluate what the behaviors are that aren't working in your marriage. Right. And you know what they are. Yeah. I mean, write it down, write the three, write the one. I mean, if you know you have outbursts, there it is. I mean, if you, if your dad was the type of guy that would just burst out in anger on you and, and you're doing it, that's it. And for those of you that are struggling because you're like, I don't know what those behaviors, what leads to disconnection, arguments, tears, frustration, you know, what behavior mm. leads to any one of those responses? So again, let, let, let's, because that's a big one. And, and I think you guys need to write this one down because that's huge. So what leads to disconnection, arguments, tears, frustration in your marriage, then you need to own those behaviors. Like you're not going to internalize, but you just need to accept where they've come from. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, okay, I brought this into my marriage. I saw my mom do this. I saw my dad do this. I saw this is how they related to one another. And you know, some of you, I, I know it's hard to hear, but some of you have probably been told in certain situations that you're acting like your mom or your dad. It probably means you are. Okay. Your spouse is seeing something and they're understanding that that's where it's coming from, right? So don't, don't get super upset. Don't get super defensive. Use that as an opportunity to really reflect on and figure out why. And this can be really tough because going to the beginning of the show where we said you made those vows, mm -hmm. right? Like I'll never, ever be like my dad. I'll never act the way he acts. And now that it's being spewed to you, and I'm not going to say, I shouldn't say spewed, but, but brought in front of you, that can, that can lead to a lot of unsettling feelings in you because now you're going, well, no, I'm not. I'm and now you're trying to defend yourself. And in that time, if you're, if you're getting defensive and argumentative, boom, you, you know it right there. And then that guess what? I never been struck. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it has. And remember, for both of you, you're not bringing these things up to cause pain. You're bringing these out to cause progress. So that the two of you are healthy. Right. And grow closer together. That's, that's the goal, right? Emotionally, financially, spiritually, sexually. Each reason, each time it's brought up is so that you guys can now connect at a deeper level. So you guys can go, we live the extraordinary marriage that we always desired, mm -hmm. although we weren't shown it. And it's interesting because as we get older uh, and I see it, uh, there's a different generation. And, and it's interesting because in, in, I'm, I'm in my early 40s and I've, I've had many a conversations with folks in my age demographic and how the generation prior to us, our parents is much, is much different. Oh, sure. And how they connect with each other and how they, they, they lived their marriage out. And so we're trying to figure it out sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and so be okay when be okay to, to say, you know what, you're right. Like you brought something up and, and I do need to look at this. 
and, and use that defensiveness as an indicator that they probably, that you probably are right. If, if we have an emotional response to something, it's usually because there's a nugget of truth in there, you know, and, and you know, so you're, you're evaluating what these behaviors are, you're identifying where they come from, you're owning them. And then it's, you know, what's the alternative response going to be right? Name calling. I will tell you folks, name calling is not effective. My coaching clients know that if they start calling their spouse's names on a coaching call, I'm going to jump in with both feet and call a timeout, right? Because it doesn't go anywhere, right? Hiding your finances and, and trying to shuffle money around doesn't go anywhere. You know, are you guys going to have a weekly finance meeting? Are you going to call time out in the middle of a, an argument because you're about to say or do something, you know, put your fist through a wall because that's what dad did or, you know, storm out because that's what my, I, I don't know what the behavior is that you saw, but if you're about to do it, you need to have an alternative response. And that's going to look different for each one of you. You know, are you going to count to 10 when you're angry? I, I've got couples that have a code word. When they start to see somebody in the relationship getting married, they'll call out things like chocolate chips. Mm -hmm. Why? Because chocolate, it's hard to be angry when you're talking about chocolate chips. I'm just saying. Find chip a word that puts a smile to your face. Absolutely. You know, are you going to, are you going to, you know, change the language that you use? Are you going to work through the awkwardness of being able to have difficult conversations? Right. And this starts with something like, you know, getting the book connect like you did when you first met, mm -hmm. right? Like if you've forgotten how to have those intimate, deeper conversations, then let's equip you with a tool so that you can do it. And we'll put a link to that book in the show mm -hmm. notes, but you know, it's, it's going, how do we, how do we do something different? Because what we've been doing hasn't been working. And you and I both know the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different response, right? Stop banging your head against the wall in your marriage. It might just be that the behaviors that you're engaging in because that was your model look different. It's why we know that so many of you turn into the show every week because you didn't have that model and you're hearing conversations that you've never heard talked about before. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times Tony and I have gotten emails when somebody's like, my parents never talked about this stuff. And you guys just like, like spent 30 minutes on a show talking about it. Nobody ever told me that we had to have conversations about sex or finances or what to do when I'm angry. Yeah. And here's the thing for, for some of you, you're, you're stuck, right? I mean, you're looking at this and, and when you're trying to make a shift, you're trying to make a, a change, you're, you're working together and yet you can t constantly are getting stuck. It's at this point in time, folks, that I would honestly recommend getting on a call with Elisa, do a coaching call, get specific strategies, maybe for, for what you guys are dealing with. So that way you can begin to have success. We athletes have coaches for a reason because they want to get better. They want to get stronger. They want to get faster. They want to get mentally prepared, you know? So why don't we do that in our marriage when, when we come up to a place where we we're having some, some issues, like we want to get better, stronger, faster, more clear. So do that. So mm -hmm. if you want to learn more about Elisa's coaching, go to one extraordinary marriage.com slash coaching. The fact of the matter is, is that we don't have to, we don't have to keep repeating what was sewn into us. We don't. You and I, Tony, everyone listening to the show, we all have a choice to make each and every day on how we show up in our marriages and, and whether or not we keep lugging that baggage from the past or we say, you know what, today's a new day. And I will tell each and every one of you, it doesn't matter what day you're listening to the show. Today is a new day for you and mm -hmm. a new day for your marriage. Yep. And you get to make the decision today on how you show up and what you use as your role model. Yeah. So this week, you guys, it, that's what it's about. It's about changing, changing the legacy, changing your own legacy. We're going to start putting behind the behaviors that we learn from our parents. We're going to put them behind us. Not to say that we don't love them or anything. We love those folks, but we're going to put the behaviors that we were taught that we saw that we never wanted to take in our own marriage. And we're going to, we're going to just leave them. We're going to, we're going to leave them behind because what's ahead is what's going to really determine how we live out our life and our marriage. We love you guys. We love you guys. And we, we just declare that there's a freedom over you guys in this area of your marriage because there's so much more to come when you are broken free of those things that you saw that you never wanted to do. But we got to break that off of you right here, right now, so you can experience what's ahead in your marriage. We love you guys. Have a fantastic week, and we'll catch you next week.